Hello everyone, welcome to Dedicated Dentist. So today I'll discuss the server system theory, also Petrovich's hypothesis. So it is based on this cybernetics language that is, you know, uh, like uh, uh, when we have to explain this loops or feedback mechanism, let's say we have to explain this thyroid stimulating hormone, releasing hormone, its relation and how they work, you know, so this mechanism. So it's based, it's applied in biomedical sciences and orthopedics to make people understand the concepts or any physiologic process like i said about thyroid so we apply this in orthopedics and ortho as well okay so we will discuss how once the how these systems or craniofacial component the skeletal non-skeletal units all these spaces and all these are linked hormones and all okay so they work in harmony these things are linked and like a loop they affect one another like any changes in maxilla will affect mandible so we'll see how so information is passed through communications or signals and these signals can be physical uh, chemical or any forms okay so we divide this physiological system into open and closed loop okay and this closed loop has servo system that is we are concerned our conservo system here is face we are concerning craniofacial components or face okay we are talking about this so uh, this theory is very important you know where it is is an application of myofunctional appliances so it is very important for you so that you understand this theory because then you will realize the actual concept behind myofunctional appliances okay and why is it given most particularly uh, mostly in class 2 cases okay so any physiological system they are divided into open closed looped closed loop where things are li linked they work in positive and negative feedback mechanism okay so servo system that is our face and this has also so a regulator so when we are talking about the servo system phase we have an input that is maxilla and it is constantly changing okay and then we have an output that is mandible which is adjusting to the changes okay so input is the thing that is constantly changing with time okay that is maxilla and output is mandible which is adjusting to these changes and these are influenced by the hormones so if we all know we have seen till now that maxilla grows downward and forward direction downward and forward that is because of the uh, influence of the nasal cartilages and the cranial base right and so this maxilla it grows anteriorly so these primary cartilages nasal septal cartilage epiphysis of long bone or cranial base synchondrosis they push this not epiphysis of long bone the nasal cartilage and synchondrosis they push the maxilla anterior downward anterior and forward direction okay so downward and anterior direction so that is why this maxilla is influenced by this cartilage nasal cartilage and cranial base synchondrosis okay so these primary cartilages they are not not influenced by local factors whereas the second cartilage that is condyle coronoid of the mandible well these are affected by the local factors so any change in mandible will affect maxilla any change in maxilla will affect mandible so this vice versa because again there comes this application of n lowest counterpart principle so maxilla and mandible these things are related and this is why we can control growth of ma uh, mandible we, we modulate mostly mandible that is we give myofunctional appliances mostly in class 2 cases where we you know adjust give a bionator or anything any appliance such that we uh, make the patient bite in a forward direction that is see the maxilla is like this and um, uh, the patient is retruded mandible patient has a this is the maxilla and patient has a retruded mandible so we give this appliance so the patient he bites in a forward direction we make the patient do that so we control mandible we control mandible we modulate mandible so this is the application of this servo system theory that is myofunctional appliances as given by petrovitz now let's understand what this lateral pterygoid has to do in this lateral pterygoid it brings about protrusion okay uh, we'll study the muscles of mastication in detail because you know you have uh, you have to understand muscles of mastication really well for or understanding ortho and prostho well so yeah we'll do that so uh, uh, like i said we have con consider servo system as our face input is maxilla where the constantly changes are occurring and then that changes affect mandible so uh, this um, because you know maxilla and mandible they are enlosed 
counter part principle as per the n loss counter part principle these are the counter parts that is any change in maxilla will be affecting mandible and that they grow at same rate maxilla and mandible these are counter parts so any change in mandible will be affecting maxilla so this is how the things work so uh, we'll see how now what this theory has to say is the mandible is uh, sorry maxilla it goes downward and in forward direction under the influence of the cranial basin chondrosis nasal septum okay so maxilla it takes this anterior and forward position compared to the mandible yes mandible is little normally mandible is little behind maxilla okay so uh, maxilla takes this anterior and forward position under the influence of this cartilages so this results in discrepancy between upper and lower arch so uh, what happens is this discrepancy let's say maxilla is growing too much forward okay uh, compared to mandible that is excessive growth you know this will result in class 2 we already know that when uh, mandible is rest retruded so if the maxilla is go growing too forward anteriorly the, so this detect this is detected by the teeth or the you can say proprioception i said there is the proprioception they are like mini brain of teeth okay so they, they detect any movement any changes and they send the signals to the cns and then changes are brought about so any occlusal de deviation prematurity is detected by this proprioception and the signals are sent to the cns and then this activates the lateral pterygoid muscle and then this brings about movement of mandible that is protrusion okay so you see how things work mandible if maxilla is growing excessively anteriorly or forward and mandible is retruded this this is detected by the occlusal this occlusal prematurity you know teeth won't be in good contact won't be in stable occlusion so this will be detected by the uh, proprioception okay and then the signals will be sent to the cns and this will activate the lateral pterygoid muscle as lateral pterygoid muscle brings about the protrusion of mandible so now this lateral pterygoid muscle will contract you know and then this will stimulate the condyles and the cartilage grows the vascularity vascular supply in that region will increase and the cartilage of the condyle will grow these things will all stimulate the condyles to grow to protrude or take the mandible forward um, to you know keep up with the maxilla right as the maxilla is forward too much forward and mandible is lagging or retruded so to keep up with maxilla there will be growth of condyle there is there will be increased vascular supply and thus these hormones they will act directly and indirectly on the condyle so now you get it that when a patient has a class 2 this is why give we give the uh, auto you know, so my function appliances in the class 2 patients mostly okay so you see this maxilla okay is growing anteriorly and mandible is retruded so this just to summarize okay so, so this will be there will be the unstable occlusion teeth won't contact well okay these are occlusal prematurity occlusal deviations will be detected by the proprioception and the signals will be sent to the cns okay so they will act activate this lateral pterygoid muscle there will be increased vascularity in the muscle the increased blood supply to the muscle and condyle of the cartilage okay cartilage of the condyle sorry so there is will be increased increased growth and supply in the condyle of the mandible and thus this mandible will try to come forward and achieve a stable occlusion okay so this will try to achieve a stable occlusion and then you know will try to keep up with the pace of maxilla now when there, there are alterations or this is not possible then at that time we have to give myofunctional appliances and you know we don't uh, just like how in removal appliances there's the springs and all they control individual tooth movement here we don't do that we cannot control individual tooth movement we give this for the skeletal uh, you know alterations or skeletal abnormality okay so we give this myofunctional appliances for the skeletal abnormalities and mostly we give this because uh, before the growth spurt ceases okay because then later the growth of maxilla mandible won't take place you know so this is why it is important for you to understand growth spurt its application and all so that was it about the petrovitz hypothesis or servo system theory guys if you like the video let me know in the comment section below and please subscribe my channel it is always your comments that keep me going thank you